hey guys welcome to another video and in today's video i am going to be drawing one of my viewers original characters i would love to turn this type of video into a series so if you're interested in having me draw one of your ocs please leave a comment below and i will be reading them all so this is going to be a really chill video with my sketching and speed painting just playing in the background while i kind of give you some information about this character and the techniques that i used while drawing her so today's character comes from one of my subscribers and she's so awesome she's so supportive and i'm so glad that i could draw her character i hope i did her justice um this character comes from artistic bean and I would like to give you a little bit of history on her. She is currently nameless, which so are all of my OCs, so no worries there. So this character is a fairy who lives in a magical forest that is filled with other peaceful fairies and they all live in tranquility together. However, that all changes when a mysterious someone passes through our fairy's homeland and ends up dragging her on an adventure. Even through all the initial chaos that this person brings, there is still a possibility of love blossoming between them. So Bean mentioned to me that even though her original character looks quite cute, she has a very fierce and badass kind of personality. Very similar to Selena Sardathian, if anyone has read A Throne of Glass. This character in the book is a very fierce assassin who is not only super beautiful, but also extremely deadly. So now that you know a little bit about this character, um, I'm going to be popping in and out, kind of just explaining my workflow and processes as the speed paint plays. So thanks for watching and hope you enjoy! So if I am being completely honest, I am not the best when it comes to picking colors and understanding how to treat those colors in certain lighting scenarios. So a lot of the time I like to start my paintings in grayscale where I turn my rough sketch into a more detailed version where I just shade with black and white and build up values that way. This might not be the best way to learn because I'm kind of avoiding color until I have to use it, which isn't very fun. By starting out in grayscale, it kind of just takes the worry out of picking colors and I can kind of focus on getting the values correct. But with every process, you know, there's pros and cons. And when it comes to grayscale and then turning it into color, I notice my colors can be kind of muddy, uh, too dark, and things like that. In the beginning of this piece, I actually struggled quite a bit with getting the perspective of her face and most specifically her eyes correct. Um, this is the reference that I used and I don't know what it is with me, but I find myself straying from my reference all the time. Like I know what I see, but for some reason I'm like, mm, yeah, but I'm actually gonna draw the eye in this shape. And it's like, why are you changing the shape of the eye when you know what it looks like? I don't know why, but that's like a curse I have. I just can't ever stick to the reference. And when I do stick to the reference, I notice my art is like 10 times better. So that is something that I'm working on. Definitely. When it comes to her skin and hair and the values, I try to keep reminding myself of local values. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know what that means, Every color has a value assigned to it. For example, you know, a, a bright yellow, 
If you turn that into grayscale, it is a very light gray. And if you take a bright red, that value is actually going to be more dark. And that is the local value. So if I was painting yellow hair, I would need to keep the value lighter because I know I'm going to be putting yellow on top of that value. So that's kind of what I was focusing on when I was painting in these values. And when it comes, uh, excuse me. <laughs> when it comes to learning values, that's one pro I think that can come from starting in grayscale is that you don't have to worry about color. You can just focus on where's the light hitting, where is it shaded. So I knew her hair was going to be green, so I tried to match the values of the grayscale to what I knew the green would be when I put colors on it. Hey guys, this is current me popping in just to kind of explain a little bit further what I'm talking about. So if I take this like skin color and I put it here and I put black and white over it, you can see that the local value of that color is, you know, more light. It's, this is something that would be, um, this would be more of a mid-tone color. This is definitely lighter. It is a light color. So let's pretend that I'm going to use this mid-tone color. Um, and then if I try to put the color layer on there and I try to put a skin color oops mm. ah. and if I try to put a skin color over top um the dark one look how dirty and muddy it becomes um this is because the value is too dark if you have a lighter skin tone it will not be that dark unless you know the skin is in shadow but if you're going for a base light skin tone you have to make sure to be aware of the value that you're putting it at yeah i just wanted to clarify because i suck at explaining <laughs> The background that I drew was completely on a whim. Um, I knew I wanted to do a forest, but somewhere along the way, I was having a lot of fun with shading these like cloud-like designs. Like I wanted those to be at the top of the trees, but then they became kind of puffy and I was like, well, this is kind of cool. It's kind of like a cloud and a tree. And I felt like that was very whimsical and I was just vibing and I was just going with it. It's a more abstract part of the painting, I would like to say. In this painting, there are two main light sources. The first is a more general soft lighting that is coming from the right of the canvas. And then there is a very strong backlighting coming from what I assume to be sunlight that is like pushing through the trees. Why am I saying assumed? It's sunlight, like what else would it be? <laughs> um, because the sunlight is coming directly from the back, it creates this nice rim light around the character that helps her stand out from the background because she has a lot of greens in her design and I made them kind of dark and the background is also dark. So in order to make her stand out, I made sure to give her a rim light.
Towards the end, I was becoming really nitpicky over her expression. I actually found it kind of hard to balance her cuteness with her fierceness, if that makes any sense. I wanted her to have a smirk, but I didn't want it to be too, like, sassy of a smirk. I, I really wanted to get the expression right, and I was like, um, like OCDing over it. But after quite a bit of lassoing and coloring over and over and over, um, I think I was able to achieve the expression that I wanted. So without further ado, this is my version of Bean's adorably lovely, amazingly devious fairy. Thank you so much for letting me draw her, and I hope that I did her justice. And for a side-by-side -side comparison, here is Bean's, a beautiful watercolor art, and here's mine. One thing that I kind of regret is that I didn't have more textures in this piece. I absolutely love the textures that come with watercolor, and I feel like I could have um, integrated that more into my piece. Thank you guys for watching, and if you would like me to draw your OC, or if you enjoyed this type of video, please let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing so I know that I'm doing something right. And yeah, that's really it. Uh, thank you again to Bean and thank you to everyone who's watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye!